Come on, we can do better than that. I said good morning, everybody. Better, much, much better. Glad, glad to see everybody. Good crowd this morning. Glad to see everyone that were able to make it down here, made their will to come. Uh, we're glad to have everybody. Our door's always open here. Uh, well, I should say always open. Open on Sunday. And, and for anybody that wants to come in, we're glad to have you guys a song, Dale. Two sixty six. Now it used to be two oh six in the old book. It is two sixty six. Two sixty six. The newer red one, I guess right. I should say. Yeah. But yeah, hey, that uh, that door is always open for that gospel, ain't it? Yeah. And uh, hey, yeah. you can call Brother Randall. He can get him a hold of him on the phone or text him or Absolutely. or whatever if you got to talk about anything like that at any time. So sing them over again to me wonderful words of life let me more of their beauty see wonderful words of life words of life and beauty teach me faith and do Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all. Wonderful words of life. Sinnerless to the loving call. Wonderful words of life. All so freely given. Wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life Offer pardon and peace to all Wonderful words of life Jesus only Savior Sanctify forever Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. My brother William, he really liked that song. He used to like that a lot. One time the uh, disciples, God, uh, Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples when they were in the room, and uh, a lot of the people that had followed him, you know, there was 12 disciples that we read about in the Bible, but the Bible also talks about a lot more at different times. And there was a lot of them with Jesus Christ, and they were in the uh, room with him, and they, they left him. They just they departed from him and they left him. And he looked at the others and he said, will you also go away? And they asked him, well, who will we go to? You have the words. You have the eternal words of life. You have the words of life. And those are those wonderful words that he's talking about there. Amanda, we don't have any uh, announcements or anything today? No announcements. We do have in May, as we talked about this morning coming up, will be the uh, church council. It will be the election of the officers, and we'll also be having communion. So if you are a member of the church, uh, then you should be there. That's, a, that's the most important uh, church council that we have during the year. <clears throat> but it's good to see everybody here this morning. Good to see a good crowd. 
and we're glad uh, glad you were all able to come out. As I mentioned this morning in uh, in uh, Sunday school, uh, David said, uh, "I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord." So we should be glad. We should be glad to be able to go in the house. We have this building to come to. I um, mean, it's not as fancy as some, but it's very, very nice, I think. And it, uh, it's, it certainly suffices. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, remember Paul Robb when he wanted to get this church built. You know, we had a little bitty church down on uh, 8th Street. And a uh, little bitty, uh, kind of broken down looking old building. And uh, just a small little building. I remember Paul Robb, uh, someone said that he said he'd like to build a nicer church. Uh, bigger and nicer. So that if the, if the members, the children wanted to get married, they could come here and get married in this church. So, uh, you know, he had a dream. He had a vision for it. And uh, I think it's a pretty nice church. And uh, it suffices for that, doesn't it? You know what it can do? You can come in here and you can hear the gospel and you can get saved that's uh you know that's what it's all about isn't it that's what we need to that's what we need to focus on that's what we need to have as our agenda that's what we need to to have as our goal is to get people saved because uh that's a great commission for christians if you're a christian you're left here on this earth to get other people saved wouldn't it be better for us as christians if we got saved and god took us right on home how wonderful would that be then we would have to endure a lot of the things that we have to endure in this life. But God left us here to get others saved. Because you know why? It's not his will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. That's why he wants everyone to be saved. We're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, take up some prayer requests. And, uh, and uh, Judy asked me that we would pray for her brother-in-law and his Philip, Philip uh, Groves. And he is, has dementia. And uh, they haven't given him long to live probably at this point. So she would ask if you would uh, just keep him in your prayers. Uh, anybody else have a prayer request? Yes, Stanley? Pra Stanley and his prayer list. You have one? Pam and her mother. <clears throat> Pam and her mother. Yep. Yes, ma'am? Elsie and her family. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to forget you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, Terry? Yep, my family too. That's my family also. <laughs> yes, yes, Connie. Okay, Tom and Bill. And probably Connie could use some herself here and there, couldn't she? Abs absolutely, absolutely. Uh, anyone else? Am I missing anybody? Yes, Tanya? Yeah, that's bad. As I said this morning when she mentioned that, that's getting burned a little bit is a terrible, terrible pain. Getting burned over a, a lot of your body, that, that would be horrific. Yep. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Pray for Mitchell, of course. Pray for Robin back there. They're doing both doing better, but uh, pray that God would continue to heal them and completely heal them. Pray for Brother C.A. there as well. Uh, yes, ma'am. Pray for my friends that they put. The, the Delaney? Yes. Okay. Young man killed in a car accident? Yes. So you know that family is certainly uh, hurting right now. Yep. Keep, them family, uh, keep that family in uh, your prayers and all those that have lost loved ones. We had some folks lose... Uh, their loved one over the last uh, few weeks and keep them in prayers the virus back there and the littles keep them all in your prayers God can comfort you know he can comfort that's the only one we can really turn to in a time like that isn't it you know you know we try to comfort people and uh, we try to say things and uh, words fall short a lot of times don't they because it's it's hard to say when somebody's going through uh, that what can you really say to them really uh, you can just you can just be there and show your support for them, but it's very difficult, very difficult. Anybody else? Am I missing anyone? Yeah. Keep them and and you know Judy asked there for her brother-in-law uh, has dementia. That is a that's a horrible disease, isn't it? That's very very rough on the people around them. You know that's really the the. The caregivers are, are the ones that suffer the most in a situation like that. So let's just keep them all in prayer. Let's keep our church in prayer. Let's keep the elderly. Let's keep the widows and the widows, as we mentioned this morning. Keep them all in prayer. Uh, anybody got, yeah. Uh, keep the nation in prayer. 
Yeah, the nation needs prayers. We definitely need, we need to keep our country and nation in prayers. Uh, anybody got a silent request on your heart? Because God does know your heart. He knows what we stand in need of before we even ask. But he does tell us to always ask. And we need to do that. Well, let's have any man that will come on up. And Jeremy, come on up. Because I'm going to ask you to, if you will, say prayer for us today. If I can get this thing out of here. Did you glue this in next to it? No, the other yeah, the other one would drop out of there every once in a while. That's why I would have been there. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you, Father, once again for giving us another beautiful day on this earth, Lord. Thank you for bringing us down here to this little church, Lord, where we can worship you. Lord, just uh, thank you for the safe travels to get here. Lord, there's a lot of uh, prayers out there this morning, Lord. A lot of requests been brought up, and we just pray that your will be done, Lord. Amen. We don't know each and every one. God, we just want to lift each of these requests to you, Father, and just you handle them in the way that you know is best for them, God. And we just uh, we just thank you, Lord, for each and every one that you've sent out here today, Lord. We just pray that uh, the message they hear today, Lord, will be a benefit to them and uh, be a, a, a food for them for the whole week, Lord, is our prayer. And we pray, Lord, that when they leave, they can leave saying it was good to be here. Father, we thank you once again for just all that you've done for us. You're sending your son the love, the grace, the mercy that you had for us, Lord, even when we weren't uh, deserving of it, Father. Amen. You cared enough for us, for your creation, to send your son, Jesus, to die on that cross for us so that through him we could truly have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Father, we just can't thank you for that awesome privilege that you have given us. Yeah. That one of these days, if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that we too can be a son and we can reign in heaven someday with him. And we'll thank you for that, Father. Father, we just thank you for all that you do for us. Just continue to bless this little church and each one that, uh, you know, that uh, provides for it and tries to, um, you know, be a, be a help to it. And Father, we ask now that you just bless Brother Randall as he comes before the congregation today. Uh, Lord, just overshadow him and give him a message, Lord, to feed the flock today is our prayer. And uh, Father, we also pray for all of our missionaries, as, as some of them mentioned earlier this morning, that are out in the field. Uh, Lord, that's a tough job nowadays. In many of these countries, they still persecute, beat, kill, and... Uh, and, and, and just uh, torment these uh, missionaries all the time. So, Lord, put a hedge around about them, too, and protect them and keep them safe and give them souls to preach to. Yeah. And, uh, and, Father, remember our, uh, our evangelists traveling the highways. I know old, old brother uh, Phil Skipper that was just with us, Lord, what a blessing he was. Yeah. I pray that he'll be a blessing to, uh, to all those that he continues to, uh, to minister to, yeah. and not only him, Lord, but all the traveling evangelist out there. Give them a, a, a reasonable amount of peace on the roads there, Lord, and means to support them uh, to get to the various places, Lord. And we'll thank you for that in advance. And God, as we said earlier, this uh, all the kids is going on spring break this week. Uh, Lord, I pray that you just uh, protect them as well, Lord. Uh, I know a lot of them, uh, you know, take some, some, some great risk during this time so lord just protect them all out there and keep them safe on the highways as they travel as well and uh father we'll, <clears throat> we'll thank you for that too god we just pray once again now that you just take this time and bless it in your own big way lord and we'll thank you for that bless this nation of ours and the leaders of it as well in jesus name we do humbly ask and pray and amen, amen. amen. Well, when the Bible tells us to pray, does it just tell us to pray in an offhand kind of way? It's supposed to be effectual and fervent. It's supposed to mean something to us, isn't it? 
And some and sometimes it gets overwhelming. Sometimes it does. I know I and we talked about it before. I mean, uh, I used to drive up to Ohio and work. Uh, sometimes driving home, be singing hymns and stuff, you know, and tears will be streaming out of my eyes. That'll, you know, it, it'll get you. It will get you. I remember Uncle Buck talking about that before, and it will get to you. Uh, if you're able to, stand up. If you're not, you can be remain seated. But uh, I would like to remind you, now, Amanda used to put up a paper up here that would uh, tell me that this was New Macedonia Baptist Church. And I passed to Randall Baker, and I uh, she hasn't been putting it up there lately, and I guess I've forgotten to, to say that. Uh, we will take up the offering here for the running of the church, or the building fund, uh, ladies club, whatever you'd like to give it for. And those on the video can send in a gift or offering to New Macedonia, or for New Macedonia, to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And as, and as to them on the video and them in the building here, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you will give, and may the Lord richly bless you for it. What do you got there? Right, let's, do, uh, let's do 155. Victory in Jesus. I think we all know that. I might have mixed them up with that first one a little bit. <laughs> so let's see if everybody can't jump in on this one. 155. Victory in Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the street of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Thank God for that. Amen. 
Uh, hey, Amanda, if uh, the girls come up here and, and Brody comes up here and they sing right here, will they be on the camera? Yeah. Okay. Well, come on up, guys. Brody's not singing today. Well, you're going to miss out, bro. You are singing today. You had some misinformation there, young lady. I did. All right. Get situated. This, this is, they said, is the cousin crew here that's going to sing for you today. All right. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable, are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believed, safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep. And it's time to leave. Come on and rise up. Take a breath. You're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. You're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. When he said your name, the thing that filled your veins was more than blood. It's a kind of love that washes sin away. Now the door is open wide, and the stone's been rolled aside. The old is gone, the light is come, so come on and rise up. Take a breath, and you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? You're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Well, thank you for that, guys. And Brody, aren't you glad you went up and sang with him? Oh, well, we're glad you did. <laughs> we're glad you did. All right, I guess kids can go downstairs if anybody's going to be down there with them. Good to see everybody. Has anybody else got a song they want to sing here real quick? we got a few minutes. Not you? You guys good? Everybody good? All right. All right. No, I got, my voice is a little uh, not feeling too great today. We were singing that one, it was felt like it was gonna get real dry or something. <laughs> All right, then if you uh, have your Bibles with you, or if you don't, there's one in the pew in front of you. Go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Ephesians 1, 11. Today, my sermon, I, I titled it, A Down Payment and a Promise. A Down Payment and a Promise. You know, there was a time that uh, uh, when most of the things that we bought didn't involve going to a bank and getting a loan or anything else like that. Uh, everybody just kind of went to the owner of the possession and they just made a deal with them. Uh, you know, for how much they might want to pay for it or might make a trade or something or even a payment plan where they could pay a little bit each week or a little bit each month. And sometimes you were rep required though to pay a little now to show that you were certainly serious about buying it and uh, uh, that you would uh, maybe the owner would hold it for you and you would you'd give them a little bit of money or something they would hold it for you and you would come back and you would get, get it too and that was called a guarantee or earnest money or, uh, or surety money. Now there were those that required a down payment sometime if anybody's ever bought a house or a car you're very familiar with a down payment unless you're unless you've got a lot of money already but uh, 
Over the years, different things have been used for currency. Different things have been used for money. Salt was so important in the in Roman in Roman time in the Roman days that uh, that most of the of the money or a lot of the money that was paid to the soldiers would go to buy salt. So that would become an expression: you were worth your salt, or you were not worth your salt. And there was a guy in the uh, 1940s that uh, would sell uh, peanuts to uh, at, at sporting events or stuff, and uh, he would jokingly say that he worked for peanuts. And now, of course, we know that expression is called on. If you don't make very much money, you say you work for peanuts. We know that gold and silver, uh, that most, most places in the world, most nations, most countries, most people, most cultures use some kind of gold or silver as their currency for a good while, and then we, we made coins out of it, and uh, uh, different things were made to exchange from it. Now, though, we just exchange pieces of paper, don't we? It seems to be getting less and less valuable, too, doesn't it? Uh, some things are worth what you buy, what you pay for, and some things are not. Most things now we know they do deteriorate. We know that they do uh, uh, corrode or rust or rot away. We know that. And they're no use to it after a while. Now things like diamonds, things like precious metals, they get more valuable as time goes on, but they're hard to, to uh, afford to get any of them, to lay away any of them. There is one thing, though, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. There is one thing that's more valuable than anything that we've ever seen in this world or ever will see ever see in this world again and that's what Jesus used uh, to buy our immortal souls so Ephesians tells us what Jesus did so we'll start there in Ephesians 1 chapter 11 uh, it says uh, in whom also we have attained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be in be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation and whom also after after that you believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The praise of his glory. Go ahead and turn over in your Bibles to Acts, Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, 28. Jesus paid an earnest or a down payment of sorts to purchase a possession. And that person's possession was us, the believers. That's who, we, that's who he paid that for. We were the possession. And uh, so God owns us. He owns us in the, because of Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus Christ did, God owns us. 1 Corinthians 7.23 says, You are bought with a price, and uh, be not ye the servants of men. So since we are the servants of Jesus Christ, bought of Jesus Christ, and we are owned of him, we are not to be used of men for their wicked deeds and their corrupt doctrines. In Romans 6, 4, the Bible says that if uh, you were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. In other words, if you're saved, you ought to act like it, shouldn't you? We ought to act like it. No, we don't always. We don't always. And I'm not uh, putting you down in any way. We all have problems. We all do. We know that the Bible says that the wages of sin are death. We know that. You know what? I would rather do. I'd rather be bought with Jesus Christ by that blood they did as to work for those wages of sin. What will that get you? That will just get you into hell, won't it? At the end, that's all that'll do. It also says this in 1 Corinthians 6, 20, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And the Apostle Peter also, he backs up that idea that we are bought and paid for property of the Lord, and that we are to hear and serve him only. 1 Peter 2, 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall uh, bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Swift destruction. God owns you, the Bible says. He owns you. So don't let any deceiver, don't let any deceiver or anybody steal your joy in your fellowship with God. You know, it can be easy to lose your fellowship with God. 
Just quit praying, start doing whatever you want, get into a sin and just stay in that sin. You can lose, you can lose that fellowship with joy you, with God and you can lose the joy of your salvation. David didn't uh, pray for God to restore his salvation, did he? The joy. A couple of different times you can read in the, in the Psalms where he said to ask God to restore the joy of his salvation. Uh, we read in the Bible that, that Jesus uh, gave up great riches, the Bible says, to come down to heaven, uh, come down from heaven to earth to give his life for us. He gave up great riches. He didn't bring any of them with him, did he? He gave up great riches. So what was that thing of such great value that he used to purchase the believer with? In Acts 20, 28, Acts 20, 28, pardon me for a moment. It says, uh, and... Uh, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable on you, but have, I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? 28, let's try that again. Take e a heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. Purchased with his own blood. That's amazing. That's a pretty amazing thing, isn't it? Turn on over to Titus. Turn over farther there in the in the in the Testament, New Testament there to Titus chapter two, verse fourteen. John nineteen, thirty three and thirty four says, But when they came to Jesus, and this one was Jesus on the cross, he was hung on the cross. When they came to Jesus and they saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. Because what they would do if somebody hadn't died on the cross and they want him to die a little sooner, they would break their legs so that their body would sag down more and it would suffocate them to death. And that's what they did probably to the other two thieves that were on the cross with Jesus. But Jesus was dead already. Because a bone was him was not supposed to be broken. And it says, uh, uh, and it says this, that... Uh, that a, that a soldier, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out blood and water. I got a question for you. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's exactly right. So why, why did this happen? When the chief priest, when, when the Judas brought the money back to the chief priest, you know he didn't want it. He, he, he just he felt so guilty about it. He threw it back to him. They didn't want it. They didn't want to take it, did they? They said, we can't take that money. It can't go back in the treasury. It's not lawful to go back in the treasury. Why? Because it was the, for the price of blood. What blood was that? It was Jesus Christ's blood, wasn't it? That was the blood that Jesus Christ shed for the whole world to all that would believe. And why was that blood so special? What was so special about the blood? If you remember uh, at the Christmas stories, uh, when the angel came to Mary and he told her she'd be having the son, we can see this also. It says that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, overshadowed Mary. So that blood that was coursing through Jesus Christ's veins was the holy blood of God. The holy blood of God. And that blood has power then and it has power now. It's powerful. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And then Hebrews 9, 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And if you remember, I said the title of my sermon today was a down payment and a promise. That blood of Jesus Christ was the down payment. It also was a payment in full, wasn't it? It was the promise in full. Now the, the pro, I mean the payment in full. Now the promise was that he was coming back to redeem his own. He's coming back to get you if you're a child of God. He's going to come back and get you. And he's going to take you to a place that he, that he made for you. The definition of the word redeem is to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for for payment. So I want you to understand a couple of things about redemption, about the word redemption. Number one, I want you to understand that Jesus' blood redeemed us from sin. He redeemed us from sin. He bought us out of sin. And two, he will be in his own time physically take us back to that place he has prepared for us. So Titus chapter 2 verse 14, Titus 2 14 says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purif uh, purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. But it said that he, uh, he did, uh, uh, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. So he redeemed us from that. Turn over uh, to Luke, turn back over to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21, 8. 
Luke 21, 8. Revelation 5, 9 says, And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Sin had separated us from God. Uh, but the blood of Jesus Christ uh, redeemed, redeemed our relationship, our fellowship with God. Uh, Job 19.25 says, and I'm sure you all know this, for I know that my Redeemer liver, liveth, and that he shall stand the latter day, on the latter day upon the earth. Jesus' disciples uh, asked him for signs of the end of the earth, and that's what we're going to look at here in, in uh, Luke chapter 21. We're going to start in, in verse 8, 21, 8, and this is uh, Jesus talking to his disciples about what will happen at the end of the earth and what to watch for, and he said, uh, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, Nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, thou shalt lay their hand on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer, but I will give you a mouth and wisdom which uh, all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you uh, shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see, when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed, compassed with armies, then shall that then shall the desolation thereof is nigh. Then you know rather that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of the of it depart out, and let not them which are in the countries enter therein. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this, this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the, of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts fall, failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth near. I see a lot of those things happening nowadays. A lot of them are happening. I want you to turn back a few pages to uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Matthew 20, 28. Jeremiah 50, 34 says, Their Redeemer is strong. Our Redeemer is strong. Our God is strong. He's a great God. There's none like Him. And there is no one, there's no force that can hamper or delay the redemptive power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. None can. Uh, Isaiah 43, 13 says, Yea, since the day was I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. And who can hinder it? Nobody can hinder when God works. Satan would like to be able to stop God from saving people's souls and from taking them to heaven. He'd love to be able to do that, but he doesn't have that power. Uh, he's been given some control over this earth. We know that the Bible says that he is the God of this earth. So right now he's had some, but the key of this is 
He can only do what God has given him, what God has allowed him to do. And the Bible talks about at a time when that will all be taken back away from him. And, the, and the, the, he offered Jesus Christ uh, uh, nations. He offered him power. He offered him all kinds of things. So he obviously has some, right? But there'll come a time when he won't have any. It'll all be taken away. And the Bible says it'll be given back to Jesus Christ, who is the rightful owner of it all, of course. Now in the law, and there's, some, and there's some things in the law that are a little bit hard for us to get and understand sometimes, uh, but uh, there's a place in the law, in the law of Moses, there was a commandment given for when they took a census, when they numbered the people, that it was, uh, when it, was it has some relevance what Jesus Christ did for us, and I'll read it for you here, in Exodus 30, 12 says, when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord, when thou numberest them that there be no plague among them when they numbered them so every man was to pay a specific amount of money uh, for his body when he was counted for him just being there and that money then was given to the to, uh, to the priest and it was brought into the treasury so that they could uh, serve the Lord with it now they said if everyone didn't pay then God would send uh, sickness he would send uh, infestation or a famine or a drought uh, to the people so they were to do what God told them to do and we're to do what God tells us to do you know if we're if we're uh, disobedient to God's word then we shouldn't be surprised then that we get uh, cursed for it that we get we have trouble that we have problems for it uh, the interesting thing about that, when I read that, though, the interesting thing about that verse to me is that when it's uh, the words that said, a ransom for his soul, a ransom for his soul, because that's, uh, you know, we've seen enough movies, we've seen enough TV shows and enough things that tell us that when people are kidnapped, there's always a ransom note, uh, isn't it? Always sent to them. And it was demanding money, the ransom, uh, to be paid for the safe return of that person. We understand what ransom is then. And that's essentially what Jesus Christ did for us when he died for our sins. He paid the ransom for our safe return to God, for our safe redemption to God. Matthew 20, 28 says this. Matthew 20, 28 says even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. To give his life a ransom for many. Uh, I want you to turn over to uh, Isaiah 35.10. Isaiah 35.10. Isaiah 35.10. Mark 10.45 says almost exactly the same thing that Matthew 20, 28 says that Jesus had given his life a ransom for many. Now why would God have those same verses almost exactly? Sometimes all four of the Gospels have almost exactly the same verses in them. So why do you suppose God would do that? I think it's because 2 Corinthians, uh, as it says this in 13.1, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. 1 Timothy uh, 2.6 says a, a similar thing. It says this, uh, who, uh, and the same as, as Matthew and Mark almost, it says, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So we know that Jesus Christ gave himself for all, didn't he? He died for everybody. He, gave, he died for all, the Bible says. But everybody won't accept him, will they? That's a sad thing, folks. That's a sad thing. He died for he died for people, and they just won't accept what he did. Some won't even believe that he ever existed, and some just not even interested needing him. Some won't even say they even need him. Some just not interested. Isaiah, as we know, was one of the mighty prophets of God. He was a mighty man of God. He did a lot of great things from God. He had a lot of great prophecies, and a lot of his prophecies uh, involved the Messiah, who we know to be Jesus Christ. He had a lot of great prophecies about him. And uh, many times he drew a parallel between the Jews, between the Jews and the church uh, that, would, that we now worship uh, Jesus Christ as the Son of God in. And I believe this verse that we're going to read here in uh, Isaiah 35, it was one such verse that it draws a lot of parallels that we'll talk a little bit about here in a moment. Uh, 35.10 says, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and, uh, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So the ransomed of the Lord. We're the ransomed of the Lord. 
just the same as the, as Israel was, same as the, zoo, the Jews were. Now Zion, uh, we know that was, uh, and and other places in the Bible, it 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 kind of draws a parallel between them and heaven. That's that's, that's like heaven going over Jordan was like crossing over into heaven. So same in the, uh, some of the same promises that he gave them there in, in uh, Isaiah 35 that he gave to the Jews, he also gives to us in Revelation 21. And he talks about the joy, the gladness that we'll have, and the sorrow fleeing away, that there'll be no more sorrow. There'll be nothing like that. Go ahead and turn over in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Dexter and Dale, you can come on up. Any man that wants to can come up, actually, if they want to. So we are uh, under the control of the devil. And Jesus bought us with his own blood. We read that many times there. He bought us with his own blood. We were lost out in sin, in the miry pits of sin, some would like to say. And Jesus ransomed his own body to free us from that bondage of sin and oppression. We were separated, separated, estranged, and alienated from God, from the commonwealth of Israel, the Bible tells us. And Jesus redeemed us and bought us back. He brought us back into the fold. He grafted us into the olive tree as a wild olive tree uh, branch being brought into that. And he made us heirs and joint heirs, the Bible says, with him in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. He loved us. And why did he love us? Why did we love him, should I say? Because he first loved us. You know, he made us promises. He gave us mercy. He gave us grace. And we didn't deserve it, did we? We didn't really do nothing to deserve it. He just loved it. He's made us promises that he would keep us safe, that he would keep us for eternity. And not because we were so good, not because we were so righteous, because the Bible says that we are none righteous. No, not one of us. Not, none of us are. And not because he needed us. He didn't save us because he needed us, did he? No, no. <laughs> he had everything is right. But because we needed him, and he knew we needed him. Because he knew we couldn't keep that law. He knew that we couldn't keep that law. He loved his creation, and he knew that we needed him. You know, there's nothing that we can ever do to repay him for what he's done for us. Not, no way that he can, we can ever do that. All, all he expects of us is very easy. He don't expect us to go out and do great things. He don't expect us to do out and do great works. And you know what, folks? Don't ever misunderstand that I'm telling you not to do good works. Because we are commanded to do that. Because we are saved and after we're saved. After we're saved. We should have compassion on people. The Bible says this, that... Uh, what will Jesus do? He said, we've got an old stony heart, don't we? We're born with an old stony heart. And the Bible says what? That he'll remove that and he'll give you a soft heart of flesh. And that, you know, what he's talking about there, we're supposed to be compassionate as Jesus is compassionate. We're supposed to be merciful as Jesus is merciful at that point. We're supposed to love each other. You know, that is one way you're supposed to know that you're saved. Because it says that the, the love will flow from the breast to breast of the brethren. That's the one way that you know you're saved. The Bible says that all we have to do then to receive this great gift of salvation, and you know, how you gonna, how you, what are you going to do if you neglect so great salvation? It's going to be a terrible time at your death. It's going to be a terrible time at your death if you do, but it says that all we have to do is confess him because he, believe that he's the Lord, that he's the Son of God, that he died for our sins. Anybody here believe that they're not a sinner? Every one of us are sinners. For all, all, have sinned and come glory, short of the glory of God. That's me, that's you, that's everybody that's ever lived on this earth other than Jesus Christ. And he was the sinless Lamb of God, and that was why he was able to give himself for us. But we're to believe that he died on the third and appointed day and that he rose again from the dead and then he sits eternally on the right hand of the Father. And what's, he, what's he doing there on the right hand of the Father? Has he forgotten about us? He's there to make intercession for you because why? We need, an inter we need an intercessor, you know. We do need it. And we need it because this reason, because you've got an accuser, the Bible says. 
Night and day, night and day he's saying there, look at this guy, look at that person, look at that lady. They say they're a Christian, but look at them, look what they do, look what they say, look how they dress, look, look how they act. He's, he's, he is trying to deny every single thing that you think is okay. He's up there telling God, that, that guy ain't nothing. He's no good. You know what? He's right about that. That's, only, that's the bad thing about it. When, when Satan stands up there and he uh, tells God, that, they're no good. He's right. The only one thing that makes us good at all is what we've been talking about here today is that precious shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that makes us good. That's the only thing that will ever make us good. What we're going to do here is we're going to look at, uh, uh, as Paul lays out this simple plan in Romans 10, 9, and we close each servant with, service with this because we want to make sure that people know the gospel. We want to make sure that people understand the gospel because, you know, it's easy to get confused. There's a lot of disinformation in the world. And it's easy to get confused. Now, the Bible talks in several places about having faith and belief, belief in Jesus Christ. But Paul brings it all together here in, this, uh, in these few verses here. And he says this in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. When you, if you've got a Bible in your hand, look at that. Look at that. When we look at that word, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see that Lord? That's not a little L. When it talks about you being the Lord of your house, when it talks about any human being a Lord, it's got a little lowercase l. But when it talks about Jesus Christ as Lord, it's got, a lo it's got an uppercase l. It's uh, because he is the Lord of Lords. If anybody claims to be a Lord, <coughs> Jesus is over him, way over him, way over top of him. If anybody claims to be a king, Jesus is a king over top of them. If one talks about him being king, it's, a, it's an uppercase k. But it says here, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now let me ask you this also about that. That's the resurrection it's talking about, isn't it? Why, why is that resurrection so important? Because if God, the Bible says, if, if, if there is no resurrection... And Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead. And if Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, then your faith is in vain. And you're yet in your sins. That's why, this, that's why it's so important to believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection God. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The verse 13 here, verse 13, uh, 10, 13, is the only prayer that God will hear from you if you're not saved. And this is what he says here, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, folks. That's pretty simple to me. That's pretty simple. You know, it does require of you, not work, but belief. Just believe. 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 You know, God in one of the verses, and I believe it's in Mark, says that it is a commandment that we believe his son, in his Son. If you, I, I saw something on a on a uh, video or something the other day. It was a still, but anyway, it had, it had a billboard that somebody had put up, and it said, "There is no God, there is no Jesus. Nobody's going to come and help you. We're all on our own." And at the bottom, a little byline <laughs> said, "said it was uh, paid for by the atheists of America." Yeah. They're wrong. They're liars. They're deceivers that Jesus, that Jesus talked about would come, and they have come. Even in, Paul, even in Paul's day, there were people that came into the church. You know, Paul would go in and preach, and when he would leave the church, there would be people who come in and say, well, that ain't exactly right. Here, here's really the way it is. If somebody tells you something different from what this Bible tells you, then they're a liar. They're a deceiver, and then they're trying to get you to go to hell with them. Here's what we're going to do. Let's have everybody stand up, if you will, if you're able to stand up. If you're not, you can be remain seated, and that'll be okay. But we're going to have these gentlemen up here sing a uh, song of invitation. If God has spoken to you in any way, just come up here and we'll, we'll uh, however you want to do, whatever you need to do, whatever you want, we'll talk to you about that. We'll go over it with you more perfectly if you need to. Plan of salvation if you need that. If you want to, as Sandy did there a few weeks ago, uh, rededicate your life. You know, that's kind of like being revived again. 
and we just had a revival and we, we do appreciate the, uh, the, the uh, skippers coming and uh, we appreciate Phil Skipper. I think he's a great man of God. I think God has blessed him mightily as a preacher. So, uh, you know, we need to be revived occasionally. You know, we, we, get, we get complacent. We, get, uh, we forget about things. There's a, there's, a, there's a place in the Bible where Jesus said that, uh, you know, people can forget that they were ever uh, brought from their sins, ever bought and paid for from their sins. You can do that, folks. You can do that. You can sear your conscience like with a hot iron, and anything that you do seems okay to you. You know, at, at first, at first when you do bad things, your conscience bothers you a little bit, stings you a little bit. But you, you keep shoving it down. The Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. So you have that ability to do that. The Spirit, what's the Spirit's uh, role in you? It is to, to bring you into all righteousness and all truth and all knowledge. But if you don't listen to it, if you went to school and sat in the, desk, uh, at the, in the uh, classroom all day long and slept, didn't do you any good to be there, did it? If you went to the doctor and he told you, you've got to do this, you're going to die, and you don't want you, well, I ain't doing that. Whose fault is it? It's our fault then if we do that. If we don't follow the words of Jesus Christ, then it's our fault. If the day comes when we are laying in our deathbed and we're taking our last breath, if we haven't done what the Bible tells us to do and accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior by belief in his death, burial, and resurrection, then it's nobody's fault but our own. But as these men sing, if God has spoken to you in any way, we'll try to help you out in any way that we can as we sing. I've known this young lady since she was a little bitty girl, and yeah. uh, known her mother since she was, she was a little, <laughs> little bitty girl. And she, and this is a spinning image of her mother for sure when she was, uh, she was that age. Uh, but uh, you know what? Your mother's salvation can't get you into heaven. It cannot. Your father or grandfather was a preacher, a good friend of mine, a good friend of a lot of people in the churches. His his salvation couldn't get us into church. You know, we're on our own when it comes to salvation, Amen. aren't we? Amen. Uh, you, you heard the things that we read here from the, from the Bible. Let's look over that one more time, if you would, here. It says here, as we read those before, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And what that means is this, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all things. He's, he's the God. You know, he's the Son of God. He's the Lord. He is over everybody and everything else. And it says this, and shall believe in thine heart. And that's the key. You've got to believe in your heart. Marquita can't believe for you. Junior couldn't believe for you. Polly couldn't believe for you. You've got to believe it in your own heart. It says that. If you believe uh, in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And this last part says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what, what we usually do here, just to make sure that you completely understand, uh, we'll say a prayer here, and it'll be a model prayer, and I'll, I'll say the words, and then you will uh, repeat them after me if you believe them, okay. right? Okay. All right let's, all, let's all bow our head here for a second. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all things. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all things. I do believe that I'm a sinner. I do believe that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. 
I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that he died for my sins on the cross. I believe that he died for my sins on the cross. And I believe that he rose again on the third day. And I believe that he rose again on the third day. I ask you to give me salvation. I ask you to give me salvation. And to save me for eternity. And to save me for eternity. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen. 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 Now, uh, now, this lady's name is Gracie. I'm right about that. That's what yes. I've been calling you all about. Right. And so, uh, uh, Gracie has accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. And I guess now you want to follow him in baptism at some point? Yeah. Okay. When would you like to be baptized? Well, uh, you'll have to let us know because uh, we'll have to bring some clothes to be changed into and you'll have to probably bring some okay. clothes. To, um, okay. We can do it any time if you want to do it next week. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just yeah. want you to understand that baptism doesn't save you. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't save you. Now, there's a lot of, of uh, misunderstanding about that in the world. A lot of people think that's, uh, that salvation is baptism, but it isn't. Yeah. They're two separate issues. Jesus Christ told us to be baptized, to follow him in baptism. Yeah. So we do that to be obedient to the word of God. Yeah. Now it does, it answers a good conscience, Peter says, and it's the like figure. What it means by that is, you know, you're dead to sin, you're buried in the water as Jesus was in the tomb, and then you're raised again, like his resurrection, in the newness of life. And that's why we baptize. We want to just show the world that we are follower of Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing. We do that. Do you want to be try to do it next week? Yes. Well, have you got my number? No. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, let me give you my number before you leave, and you, you let us know if for some reason you don't think you can make it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll need oh. to know that because we'll need to fill up here for going to be for sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll need to fill the baptism up, and uh, we'll need to have everybody. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who will want to come and witness that. And uh, we're glad to see that. I tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to, Jeremy, you can turn that off anytime you want. Uh, or Amanda or somebody. Jeremy, Jeremy, do you want to close this in prayer or do you want Dale to? Whatever you want to do, buddy. Whatever you want to do.